Hey friends of Wildland Fire, Darren Clayton here, State Fire Meteorologist for South Dakota. Today we're going to do our third installment of the Don't Use the Haynes Index video series. Today's installment is going to be focused on the misuse of the Haynes Index, and it's going to be relatively short and straightforward, so let's get right to it. When Don Haynes developed the LACI, the Lower Atmosphere Severity Index, in 1988, he did so by comparing a zero Zulu radio sonde data, basically late afternoon in the United States, radio sonde or weather balloon data, um, atmospheric data, to wildfire growth that day. And um, so he intended the index to just have one value per day. Um, and really, it's not a forecasting metric at all because he used a late afternoon radio sonde to compare it to that day's wildfire growth. And, you know, generally speaking, the late afternoon radio sound is launched after the fire got big to begin with. Um, he even states in the paper that in order, if we wanted to use the morning radio sun launch or the 12Z radio sun launch, the, the breakpoint values that we discussed earlier, that give our values of one, two, or three for each side of the Haynes index, those might need to be adjusted. In fact, he says that his operational, the operational needs of forecasters isn't really even the priority uh, for development of the Haynes index. And so we're misusing it right out of the get-go if we're actually forecasting a value for the Haynes Index. So on your screen right now, you'll see uh, a chart, and it's basically a, a mediogram, uh, weather variables through time, of a forecasted Haynes Index, and that's the one right on the bottom. This is produced by the National Weather Service, and I'm not hating on the National Weather Service whatsoever, but they're producing an hourly value for the Haynes Index going out to you know, 48 hours. That's not how the Haynes Index was intended to be used. It, 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 we don't have the science to support what you're seeing on the screen. So that's definitely problematic. And so remember that, you know, the Haynes index, one value per day, and it was only given in the afternoon values. The other problem with having that hourly uh, data, and especially overnight, is oftentimes overnight you have a nocturnal inversion. That nocturnal inversion decouples or separates the surface layer that's going to affect your wildland fire from the area above it in which the Haynes index is looking at. And so the Haynes index, really one value per day, and it's really only value uh, it's really only valid in a, a day operational period. It's not intended to be used at night, but yet we, we do use it at night operationally, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Other problems with the Haynes Index is we're, we're training on it incorrectly. On your screen now is the actual table from Don Haynes' paper in 1988 that kind of compares his index value to large fire growth. And now on your screen is a slide out of the current version of S290 that talks about the Haynes Index with respect to large plume-dominated fire growth. It's subtle, but it's important. Don Haynes never discusses plume-dominated fire growth in his paper whatsoever. You don't see the words plume or plume-dominated in the paper at all. And so we might be able to assess large fire growth uh, from the Haynes Index, but it tells us really nothing about the ability for a fire to get plume dominated. Uh, that's really problematic. And, you know, there's some of these languages in the past couple of versions of the IRPG as well. <sighs> so to kind of summarize what we're talking about here, we can't use it as a forecasting metric because that's not how it was developed. And it sure doesn't tell us anything about plume dominated fires, because if you read through the original uh, LACI, Lower Atmosphere Severity Index paper, it mentions nothing about plume dominated fires at all. But what if you're interested in those types of things? Well, I think you have to ask yourself, what are you using the Haynes Index for? If you're using it to assess large fire potential, maybe that's the best way to use it, especially if you're looking at late afternoon radio sun data and comparing it to that day's large fire growth. But if you're using it uh, to assess tomorrow's potential, that's not an appropriate use of it because that's not how it was developed. Um, if you're using it to assess plume dominated fire growth, just stop, don't, because that's not the way it was developed. Um, and you got to remember, even if you're using it to assess large fire potential, it doesn't take into account wind, which is likely the most important thing in driving large wildland fire growth. Going back to the plume dominated thing, really, you need the fuels. If you're looking to get a big pyrocumulus or a pyrocumulonimbus above your fire, the pyrocumulonimbus itself is driven by the wildfire. So your fire has to get big to begin with before you get the, the, the big plume 
thunder cloud above it. So chicken or an egg thing, right? Um, you had to have the fuels to get the big plume to begin with. If you're using it to assess situational awareness, you know, hey, in a broad scale, what's tomorrow looking like? What's the day after that looking like? You know, I'd recommend you go to the hot, dry, windy index for that kind of a thing. Um, but my main stress here is look at the physical processes that govern wildland fire spread. Go back to the basics. Look at the fire behavior triangle and the weather component of the fire behavior be fire fire behavior triangle, look at wind, look at RH, look at temperatures, look at fuel temperatures, look where you are in your slope. Go back to the basics. We don't need uh, an, an index to tell us these things. Um, and not only is the index not telling these things, but even if it were telling these things, the important things are hidden inside the index because a value of two, three, four, or five, or six doesn't tell us anything about the state of stability in the atmosphere. It doesn't tell us anything about the state of dryness near the surface, which is impacting the surface fuel. So to summarize, don't use the Haynes index. Don Haynes told us in his paper, don't use it. Uh, it was a first effort that will undoubtedly require refinement. Um, so let's just avoid using the Haynes index altogether. And you don't have to hear it straight from me. Listen to other researchers around the country. My good colleague, uh, Brian Potter, a Forest Service research meteorologist, uh, wrote a paper back in 2018. Here's the paper right here. I encourage you to, to, to look at it and read it. And, um, you know, he came to the conclusion that it really doesn't provide any scientifically valid information. So let's stop using the Haynes Index, please. Here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to discuss it more with you. And again, thanks for watching these videos and let me know if they're helpful to you or your colleagues. Stay safe out there.